and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day. Let me start off by saying, uh, LeBron James fanboys, you are ridiculous and so is your king. Uh, I will be surprised if the U.S. wins gold. Or maybe I should say, I won't be surprised <laughs> if they don't win the gold. Uh, so I'm sure most of you have seen uh, several several videos about the uh, South uh, about the uh, Sudan one point victory by the U.S. and uh, you know I actually watched that game and uh, that game was really irritating to watch. I think that game exposed so many things, uh, including why they needed Kobe Bryant to come save LeBron uh, back in 2008. This game exposed that because what I saw in this game is like, there are no killers on the court for the United States. <laughs> There are no real dogs on the court for the U.S. I, I mean, it's, it's very sad to watch. Uh, Anthony Edwards, you know, he, he has some attitude, but all in all, he's not dependable, not dependable, you know, highly inconsistent. But, you know, we're we going to try to keep this video pretty short. But first thing... Uh, I must say that I was, is it just me? If, if any of you watched that game, please, please chime in and let me know. <laughs> is it just me or does it feel like uh, maybe some money was slipped in some people's pockets to praise LeBron James at all costs? <laughs> I mean, is it just me? But. If, if you really paid attention to that game, they were praising LeBron James for some stuff that was just, he had nothing to do with. Uh, one thing I can think of in particular is, is uh, he was coming down the court. He made a pass to Steph Curry at the three-point line, who Steph Curry was just sitting at the three-point line. Steph Curry nails the three, and they yell out LeBron James's name. LeBron James. I was thinking, like, uh, what did he do except cross half court and make a pass to his left where Steph Curry was just sitting there, and Steph Curry's the one who who drained the shot. Like this, where is this over enthusiasm? <laughs> because LeBron James stepped across uh, half court and made a pass a few feet away from him to his left where Steph Curry was waiting and draining the shot. Uh, and there were, there were several weird things like this throughout this game. So, so that's one of the first things I noticed. That was highly suspicious, to say the least. <laughs> or maybe par for the course. <laughs> uh, another thing, let me say this. Uh, I am really tired of seeing the Le system in any form. Uh, that is a very boring just sight to see. To watch LeBron with the ball and him come across the half court, uh, th this is what I want to say about this. You know, uh, Jordan at one point got a lot of criticism for so-called being a ball hog. Uh, we know Kobe Bryant got a whole world of criticism, and they both, to this day, especially from LeBron James fanboys, get a lot of criticism. You know, this is one of their uh, ridiculous comebacks that they have with that has nothing to do with the point at hand. You might say, uh, you might say something like, uh, "Well, you know, LeBron James showed poor leadership in the 2018 Finals. You know, he 
He acted like the game was over when it was going into overtime. He showed, and they go, "Well, Kobe Bryant was the biggest ball hog the world has ever seen." Uh, can we can we stick to the topic, please? But this is par for the course for LeBron James. But anyway, so yeah, Jordan and Kobe get criticism for being selfish players, so to speak. But let me tell you something, and I think we all know this: LeBron James and that La system. That is a highly selfish way of going about basketball because what it really is, it's a dictatorship. It's LeBron James coming across the court with the ball and basically saying, deciding how he wants to stat, pad his stats. It's like, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm not on pace to have my 27 a game, so I'm, I'm going to take the shot right here. Oh, uh, let's see. Where are my assists at? Okay, let, let me pass. Let, let me pass and get credit for this assist because I'm passing to Steph Curry, who doesn't need me to help him do anything. Steph Curry's just standing there. You pass him the ball, he shoots. But the Le system is a dictatorship. It is basically one person deciding what will happen, when it will happen. I am sick of seeing the Le system. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, fanboys, please. Your king is maybe the most selfish basketball player there's been. Let, let's just put that out there. Let, let's be real. Let's think about the reason that I just said that. Because the Le system is one player making all the decisions about everything. Say whatever you want about Michael Jordan taking shots, but Michael Jordan could play within a system. And Michael Jordan had many different ways of functioning within that system. He knew how to take over when it was time to take over. He knew how to get his teammates involved, but it did not feel like, uh, it didn't feel like everybody was sitting around waiting on Michael Jordan. The Le system, that's what it is. It's everybody waiting around to see what the so-called king wants to do this trip down the court. <laughs> Completely ridiculous. But anyway, yes, I, I, I'm tired of that. Uh, yeah. So uh, the other thing I want to talk about is um, yeah, like I said, the the USA just doesn't have any real killers on the court. And this leads me to not only the whole reason that they had to recruit Kobe back in 2008 because LeBron James couldn't get it done, because LeBron James is a terrible leader, because LeBron James has no bag, because LeBron James has no pride, because LeBron James is not a killer on the basketball court, because LeBron James is a short cut, cut taker. So they had to, you know, recruit somebody who was going to galvanize the team, who was going to set the tone for the team. Uh, and to me, you know, they keep talking about, oh, how the world is caught up with the USA. I actually don't think it's necessarily the world catching up with the USA. More so is that the USA has lost its killer will for basketball. Yes, not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the rest of the world hadn't gotten better. But as I was looking, and, and pay attention to these games. If y'all watching any of these games, as I was looking, like I'm thinking to myself, like if you are just looking who looks, who appears to be more skilled, it is the U.S. Like better ball handlers, you know, the whole nine. But what it's really coming down to is that the U.S. look like they have, again, no killers on the court. No, no people, nobody who's really playing, playing with pride. Nobody who is really that guy, who's really that guy to, who really believes he is truly the best out there and who's willing to take responsibility. The U.S. doesn't have that. And so, yeah, like I said, more so than the world catching up, I think the U.S. has lost its edge on the court. And again, we can credit this to LeBron James, a big chunk of it to LeBron James and Commissioner Baltimore. Uh, so this goes to my next thing is 
There's been so many people in the mainstream media trying to downplay uh, the Dream Team, the 92 Dream Team. And let, let me go ahead and say this. The 92 Dream Team would have beat Sudan by 20 to 30 points. Because I was watching things, again, going back to the fundamentals. Uh, there was one particular play. I watched this guy who was shorter than LeBron and about half LeBron's weight completely box LeBron out. But even what was more so ridiculous is that LeBron looked like he didn't have any interest in trying to fight around this guy. It's like, oh, he, he got me blocked out. What, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I mean, I only weigh twice as much. I'm only probably twice as strong as him, but... You know, he's in front of me. What what am I going to do? But uh but yes, lack of fundamentals. The 92 Dream Team on top of having a bunch of superstars that were fundamentally sound. Uh let, and let me, I'll keep going, but why I also think the uh 92 Dream Team would have beat Sudan by 20 30 points. I believe they would have beat Team USA, this current version, by 20, 30 points. But yeah, so the 92 Dream Team, not only having some of the greatest players, and again, let me, for, for those of you, uh, for you fanboys who, who need to understand greatness, uh, to me, it's three things. It's skill, will, and leadership. Not only did the 92 Dream Team have uh some of the greatest players in terms of skill, will, and leadership, but they were fundamentally sound, and they had certified killers on that USA team, on the 92 Dream Team. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Magic, and yes, Larry Bird's back was hurting, but, uh, you know, give me Larry Bird with a bad back <laughs> over no defense playing LeBron James any day. Give me Larry Bird with a bad back over the king who doesn't play defense any day. And then, of course, you got David Robinson and Patrick Ewing. You know, it that, it, it, it wouldn't be close, fanboys. I, I know you guys don't want to believe this, but it would not be close when you're talking about uh, – not only are they the, were the 92 players skilled, like now maybe you could say they weren't as flashy as some of these players are capable. Maybe, you can even say it's a lot better ball handlers currently, but it's not going to matter. Because to me, there, there's a thing called being um, um, sufficient. It, it's not like the 92 Dream Team had bad ball handlers. So if you're just talking about the difference between being able to go through your legs 50 million times, well, who cares? It's like the 92 Dream Team, they can get where they need to go. And especially we were talking about they got the greatest player to ever play the game on there. But when you talk about Bird and Magic, it's like they can get where they need to go. Uh, the, the 92 Dream Team had a much collective higher basketball IQ than this uh, ridiculous team we got today. much higher basketball IQ. And so, yeah, to me, when, when you put all those things together, like, uh, like I said, the skill, the will, and the leadership of those guys, and uh, and, and, and let me, last but not least, let me, and, and those guys respected the game of basketball and respected the fans. They truly respected the game of basketball. So when you combine all the, all of those things. Again, Larry Bird uh, turned down uh, the $10 million he was going to get towards the end of it that they were going to give him because he said, hey, I, I didn't earn this money. I don't want it. Now, who do you know would do that? That is called integrity. So when you have those kind of players who have integrity, who are actually going to play the game uh, to their maximum capability, who's not out there just looking for praise, who's not out there looking to take shortcuts. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is a whole different animal we're dealing with. And I still believe the 92 Dream Team today 
would still beat most of these teams 20 to 30 points today. Because as I'm looking, watching the USA and just, again, it's just basic stuff. It's like lack of effort. It, again, no killers on the court, no Kobe Bryant-like figure, you know. And you got to think about it. The 92 Dream Team had uh, plenty of those kind of players, you know. When you're talking about Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, and Magic Johnson, three killers on the court who got that demeanor. But anyway, <laughs> we are going to hold up here. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Did you see that game? Have you been keeping up with the USA basketball? Do you think they are going to win the gold medal? Uh, and uh, do you think they could actually compete with the 92 Dream Team? But uh, anyway... Let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly fantastic day. And I'll see you next time. All right.